now we move on to questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And can I inform members that questions 1, 2 and 4 have been withdrawn. And, uh, I call Mr Robin Swan. Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, my department uh, takes the safety of children on their journeys to and from school very seriously and has implemented a significant number of safety schemes, many through the Safer Routes to Schools programme introduced in 2005. These schemes use engineering measures to warn drivers of the presence of pupils and reduce vehicle speeds. The Safer Routes to Schools measures included enhanced electronic signing, road markings and uh, road surfacing, coloured road surfacing, to draw drivers' attention to the presence of school children. As each school is uh, unique, additional measures, uh, including uh, the, the use of central islands, footpaths, levies, drop-off and collection areas, and enforceable keep-clear zigzags can also be considered. My department uh, is also providing road safety awareness and bicycle training each year in 60 schools through the Active School Travel Programme. A program jointly funded with the Public Health Agency. This programme was, uh, was actually supplemented in 2014-15 with additional capital uh, funding of £1 million, uh, which provided infrastructure uh, near or uh, en route to a number of schools with the aim of encouraging safe active travel for the school journey. This included the widening of footways, new and improved crossing facilities and new cycle tracks. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. The Minister will be aware that I have been working with Carnini and Clough primary schools over the past number of years, and the holdback seems to be as much funding or investment from the Department of Education. Would the Minister agree with me that the Sinn Féin Minister of Education would be better using money in school safety rather than a new Irish school in Dungavon? Well, I am grateful to the Member for his uh, uh, supplementary. I think he makes a very valid point, and, and in these days of, and months of very constrained financial circumstances. Uh, I think clear priorities have to be established, not least uh, the, uh, the safety of, of, our, of our school population. Um, I uh, agree very much with, with uh, what the uh, member has said, and I hope that uh, upon further reflection, uh, sense will prevail by the Minister of Education. And I call Mr Stephen Moodry. The Minister for his responses so far. A recent survey indicated that 8 in 10 of those surveys saw people using their mobile phones in the vicinities of schools. Can I ask the Minister, given the seriousness and the alarming amount of the numbers, would he be prepared to work with his executive counterparts and the police in uh, tackling this very serious issue? Uh, I would like to thank the Member for his uh, supplementary uh, question. And, and, and clearly, um, um, well, there are circumstances where that uh, is happening, that is to be deplored, uh, and it is a worrying uh, circumstance indeed. And I hope very much that, 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 that parents and drivers will reflect carefully uh, and, and cease such activity. Um, and obviously, um, road safety is a matter uh, principally for uh, the Minister for the Environment, DOE. Uh, but uh, as the member has, has rightly said, there are cross cutting issues in terms of. Uh, road infrastructure, in terms of justice, uh, and indeed uh, potentially in terms of health and education. And uh, I, I, I leave myself open to uh, anything that will improve uh, a situation because we simply cannot. It is intolerable that, uh, that people uh, carry out and behave uh, 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 in such a way because they clearly pose danger, not only to themselves but also to other. Um, People in the immediate area. O'Byrne. Can the Minister state if any formal meetings have taken place with other departments like DOE and Education and indeed with the PSNI in relation to try to tackle this problem in a coordinated way going forward? Well, I'm grateful to the, uh, um, to the member for his supplementary uh, question. The member may know that, that there are regular meetings uh, with uh, involving agencies and government departments. <coughs> Um, under the chairmanship of the uh, Env Environment Minister on uh, road safety issues. Uh, and, uh, 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 both I and my officials play um, a, a, a part uh, in those meetings, looking at issues and uh, identifying areas 
where progress uh, needs to be made, not only through education, but also at uh, necessary enforcement. I call Mr. Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I commend the Minister for his investment in the Active School Travel Programme and Sustrans for the delivery of the project? And can I ask the Minister, will he be able to maintain the current level of funding of, I understand, around £1 million per year for the Active School Travel Programme and extend on road cycle training for all P6 pupils? I'm grateful to the, to, to the member for uh, his, uh, his, uh, his comments. And also, um, I think uh, he. he uh, he makes a very important point. Um, it is my um, view that, uh, that the active schools uh, travel programme should be continued to be funded, uh, and I uh, will uh, look at every possible um, method by which I, I can continue to do that. Um, my department, along with the Public Health Agency, continues to fund uh, SUSTRANS to uh, promote cycling and, and walking within schools as part. Um, of the Active Travel School initiative, um, and, and uh, we are currently meeting with other departments and the Public Health Agency to consider the future of this programme beyond 2016. Thank you. And I call Mr. Tom Elliott. Number five, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, I want at the outset to express my very sincere sympathy to the family of uh, Jamie Nelson. Uh, after the recent very tragic uh, accident on the AF4 and indeed the families of all recent uh, or accidental deaths. I'm aware uh, of traffic uh, congestion on the AF4 through Inniskillen town at peak times and uh, have decided to include a road widening scheme in the 2015-16 programme on the Dublin Road close to its junction with Wickham Link. This scheme, which will have construction costs in the region of £650,000, will create uh, an additional traffic lane exiting Enniskillen travelling eastbound towards Belfast, Dublin, and will improve traffic flows in this part of the town. The <coughs> delivery uh, of this scheme in 2015-16 will be dependent on, upon successful completion of land negotiation uh, processes. Um, and as well uh, as taking forward this scheme in 2015-16, my department will of course be taking forward a number uh, of other smaller local transport and safety measure schemes, and this programme is currently being developed. Mr. Elliott for supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the, the Minister for that. Uh, and I would also like to uh, acknowledge uh, and add my sympathy to the family of Jimmy Nelson, who was uh, killed in a a uh, tragic accident on the A4 uh, last week. The, the Minister did mention about uh, land negotiations for the project on uh, Dublin Road. Just wondering, uh, he did also mention about some smaller schemes. I'm just wondering, on a more larger scheme, uh, the Southern Bypass, the Enniskill and Southern Bypass, has there been any negotiations on, on land for that as, at this stage, and what uh, situation is it at? I think it must be into its third decade now of discussions around the Southern Bypass. I'm just wondering if there's any progress in the Minister's time. Grateful to the, um, the uh, member for his uh, supplementary, and certainly I, 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 I'm not prepared to take responsibility over 30 years. Um, but uh, an update uh, for the, for the Enniskill and Southern Bypass. Um, can I say that uh, my officials are seeking to grant approval uh, to the C uh, scheme assessment report stage two uh, before the end of March uh, this year. That would leave the department in a position to announce the preferred alignment and to hold uh, uh, a public information day to help inform and invite comment from the public. The new road will be almost two kilometres in length and the overall project cost is put in the region of somewhere between 25 to 30 million. Costs are dependent on whether the new River Earn crossing uh, would be uh, a landmark structure or a more con conventional uh, design. Um, with modest funding uh, in year 1516, uh, the scheme could be advanced to draft order stage, um, and that would be the notice of intention to make both the, the, the direction and vesting order, orders and the publication of the environmental <coughs> statement. That would facilitate holding a public inquiry in 2016, if required, 
and uh, possibly making the direction order also in 2016. Thereafter, the delivery of the bypass would be dependent on the availability of finance, uh, and in the event that capital funding becomes available, commencement uh, bypass could commence in 2017, and uh, construction would take approximately 20 months to uh, complete. Landowner consultation, uh, consultations have been ongoing, and the project is being reasonably well received. Well, Mr. John Dallet. Thank the, the Minister for his answer. The Minister is probably in a unique position that he's also responsible for public transport and he will be aware that in recent times 23 buses have um, experienced fire. Uh, can the Minister assure the House that everything has been done to investigate the causes of those fires, which I believe were leaking fuel and uh, electronic problems? Can he reassure those tens of thousands of people who travel daily that in fact the transport system is safe. Thank the member for his uh, supplementary question, and, uh, and uh, uh, I mean I want to absolutely firmly uh, state, uh, on behalf of myself, on behalf of the department, on behalf of TransLink, that safety remains our prime concern and absolute priority, and, uh, and that goes for the maintenance of the entire fleet. Uh, and the member has my assurance on that. Well, Mr. Gordon Dunn. In sex, please. Mr. Speaker, uh, my department's current grass cutting uh, policy provides for two cuts per year in rural areas and five cuts in urban areas and also includes uh, the areas required for uh, sight lines. Uh, however, uh, due to severe pressures in my department's resource budget, routine grass cutting and a number of other essential services will either have to be scaled back or stopped altogether in 2015-16. In relation to grass cutting, the, bad, the the budget allocated to my department leaves no funding whatsoever to employ external contractors to carry out grass cutting. Um, I do, however, appreciate the hazards and economic issues that would result from the complete cessation of grass cutting services by my department. I am therefore likely to approve some limited work by my department's internal workforce, allowing them to commence a single cut of grass for 2015. Uh, I will only be able to confirm that this cut can be completed after I see the outcome of the June monitoring rounds. In some areas, my department um, has previously part-funded uh, grass cutting by district councils that wish, to high, to, uh, that wish to have a higher standard of grass maintenance for aesthetic and amenity reasons. Uh, I will have to cease this practice in 2015-16. Due to the, the budgetary pressures in 2015-16, uh, there is such that my department will not be able to employ external contractors. However, my department will endeavour to ensure that it meets its legislative requirement in relation to noxious weeds. And I call Mr Dunn for a supplementary. Mr Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answer. Does the Minister though, accept that there are real, real concerns out there for road users and indeed residents? in relation to road safety and amenity of areas and that grass cutting and it will not, or is it the understanding that grass cutting will not be, be carried out to acceptable standards and is my clear understanding that within the southern division which covers north down that grass cutting will be carried out by internally the same practice as was carried out last year following the minister's decision to ditch the external contractors and that weed control at this moment there are no contractors in place to manage weed control within the southern division. I'm grateful to the member uh, and the member highlights the very severe challenge that I face in, in, in balancing the books um, of, of uh, my budget uh, and I've, I've, I've indicated uh, in my answer that the use of external uh, c contractors I, I simply cannot afford even at this stage uh, and uh, much will be dependent on, on in-year monitoring rounds to address that situation. So it is a very challenging situation uh, and I understand uh, the, the concerns expressed but I also understand that I cannot provide services for which I do not have the money. 
Order. And I call Mr Danny Kinahan for supplement. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. And uh, I would like to congratulate the Minister when I've uh, raised either lighting or spraying or something that has had a healthy um, or concern where there's been a risk of safety, that they've been very quick to sort it out. But ha has the Minister got a, a, an idea of how much we are going to need in the future so that we can carry on with the cutting and the lights and everything else that we do need? I'm grateful to the, to, to the member for his, uh, uh, his comments, his sympathy uh, and his supplementary question. Um, could I say that uh, in, in cost terms that it is a relatively small uh, amount of money uh, in terms of overall budget, but uh, such are the, uh, are the pressures that, that my overall budget is in, um, uh, I, I face um, uh, a cutback of, in the region of about £60 million pounds over the responsibilities uh, of my department and, and therefore uh, we've had to look closely at all aspects of the business as they affect NI Water, as they affect uh, TransLink and as they affect um, Transport NI. So um, we are trying to be as creative as, uh, as we can in all of this but ultimately um, the, uh, the, the uh, scarcity of resources is the really big issue here and, and whilst some people say that it's, uh, that it's a, a certain percentage, 0.6% uh, impact in real terms. It is a deficit of some £60 million, pounds, and it is very difficult, challenging indeed, if not impossible, to maintain all frontline services as you would see, as you would desire, as you would need to do when you are facing cuts of that magnitude. Thank you. And I call Mr Alban McGuinness. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Number seven. The formal consultation on this much-needed £125 million pro uh, um, pound project, which links three of the, 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 uh, the, uh, the busiest roads in Northern Ireland, concluded on the 10th of March 2015. My officials are currently collating and reviewing uh, the responses before submitting the information to me for a decision on whether to hold a public inquiry. Officials will prepare and forward a full business case to the Department of Finance and Personnel for approval um, when the full context of the scheme is determined. Following the outcome of the consultation and the public inquiry, should I decide one is appropriate. The scheme will then be uh, procured through an open tendering process in accordance with my Department's procurement policy. I call Mr McGuinness for supplementary. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Um, minister, the Minister may note that uh, recently in the uh, DRD committee there was some discussion uh, in relation to an alternative to a full-scale uh, uh, model that's been suggested in terms of the interchange. Has the minister take, or will the minister take that on board whenever considering the results of the consultation uh, that he has embarked upon? Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary question and for his interest in the in this scheme. And I think it is potentially a very important scheme. I think um, it, it could, uh, in large measure, very large measure indeed, unlock uh, some of the key congestion issues uh, around. Central Belfast. I'm aware of the, of the uh, alternative uh, suggestion and, uh, that was made. In fact, uh, my officials met uh, with, with, um, with the uh, individuals uh, involved, and we are, of course, prepared and open to, to consider such uh, suggestions. And, uh, but ultimately, uh, decisions will have to be made, uh, and uh, I, I will continue to advise and update the House uh, accordingly. And I call Mr. Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Following on from the previous question, uh, and maybe even the one before that, where the minister was complaining on his budget, given this other solution, will save probably in excess of 100 million. Um, I don't take from the language you today, Minister, that you're actually exploring this with much vigour. So maybe the minister could outline exactly how much more consultation they've had with the person who made the suggestion, and where exactly those plans and whether those will actually work or not otherwise. Grateful to the member. Um, I can assure him there's no lack of enthusiasm for um, uh, 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 any of my responsibilities. Um, uh, but I, I uh, have indicated that, we, that officials met uh, with um, the, the, the individual concerned. Uh, they are currently uh, reviewing 
uh, the, what might be called the alternative uh, uh, proposal, and when they are in a position to, um, to, to report back to me, then uh, they will do that, and a further discussion uh, with um, the, uh, the alternative proposer uh, are, are necessary, then we can engage in that. Um, I have an open door policy. I think the chair of the Regional Development Committee realises that. Doesn't always use it, but, um, but I, think, uh, I think it is important that, uh, that we leave ourselves open to uh, other ideas and other engineering solutions. I call Mr. Michael Majimsey. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his answers. This is a very important scheme uh, for Belfast uh, because of the, of the tremendous traffic congestion we're getting in that area. Can he indicate to us, uh, all things being equal, when we go forward with this, what steps he'll be able to take to minimise disruption during the actual construction process, bearing in mind the sort of disruption traffic is getting there at the moment? To the, um, to the member for his, uh, for his comment, and I think he is absolutely uh, c correct in that, um, uh, that uh, it is the importance of the scheme. Um, and I think it's also uh, important that, that we move forward on it because even this scheme has been talked about for quite a long time. And uh, Mr. Elliott talked earlier about delays in the A4 uh, Enniskillen bypass, and uh, other members will bring forward schemes to mind. Uh, as to delays in that, I think it's important that we get these schemes to a shovel-ready position, uh, and that is what I fully intend to do. And I also, uh, mindful of the point that, uh, that the members make, my, my project team has examined uh, the construction programme and developed plans to demonstrate that the project can be built while maintaining <coughs> access for all tra uh, traffic movements. The project economics take account of the uh, inevitable uh, disruption that uh, will result, and any compensation payable will be in accordance with departmental policy. Uh, this does not uh, include uh, compensation for any reduction in trade, as access to all property will be maintained. Any detailed compensation claims will be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. And I call Mr. Ali Gatwood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, given the difficult financial context facing TransLink this year, uh, and next. Uh, unfortunately, the recent fare increase, the first since January 2013, was unavoidable. Uh, it should, however, be recognised that since coming to office, I have ensured that fares have increased at around half the rate of inflation. Uh, TransLink is also continuing to promote the various smart ticketing options, which will help redu uh, to reduce the impact uh, of the recently introduced fare increases uh, on passengers. For example, uh, an annual rail ticket includes a substantial discount for a regular commuter. Recent fare increase is not something that anyone wants to see, uh, myself included, but the increase has been kept to an absolute minimum, and it remains the case that TransLink fares compare fair, uh, very favourably with those in the rest of, uni uh, of the United Kingdom and indeed the Republic of Ireland. Um, I had been able to freeze public transport fares for over 18 months, but given the, the shortfall of some 60 million in my overall budget next year, revenue grants to uh, TransLink will be cut by around 13 million. Uh, if I were to insist that TransLink continues with a freeze on fares, then this would have a detrimental impact on uh, TransLink finances into the future. In 2011-12 uh, financial year, the number of passenger journeys was just over 77 million. And in the current financial year, TransLink are on target to uh, achieve 80.5 million passenger journeys, an increase of over 4.5%. This growth is most significant on the railways, but in overall terms compares very, very well uh, with other trends in other parts of the UK and Republic of Ireland. It is important to say that TransLink will actually be expected to save £7 million next year from greater efficiencies, and this helps minimise fare increases. Uh, I'm hopeful that the positive trend in passenger journeys in recent years will continue despite the increase in fares. Call Mr. Edward for supplement. The Minister will be aware of uh, the efforts being made, that were made in order to, to protect the consumer interest by ensuring that uh, the future of the Consumer Council wasn't put in jeopardy, as some had proposed. Could the Minister indicate what consultations his department and TransLink TransLink uh, undertook with the Consumer Council in advance of the decision uh, that has been referred to. 
grateful to the, uh, to, to the member for his uh, supplementary, and, and, and he, he may well recall, recall that this is ground that, is, that has been covered uh, not only by uh, myself in this House, but also through correspondence with the, the Committee for Regional Development. Uh, and um, uh, I had a, a very um, friendly and successful meeting with the uh, uh, interim chief executive of, or the acting chief executive of the Consumer Council uh, in the wake uh, of, of the decision. There had been concern on behalf of the Consumer Council that um, uh, procedures had not been completely followed through. Uh, and I was able to give uh, the, the assurance that um, uh, the reasons for that um, in this case were uh, quite exceptional and uh, uh, there would be no intention of uh, um, excluding them from any information um, uh, in, in, in any such discussions in, uh, in the future. And it comes to Roy Beggs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There has been a reduction in the public uh, tra transport uh, subsidy uh, passed down through the, the Finance Minister, uh, and despite this uh, increase in local fares that has been implemented, some think that Translink is still under significant pressure. Would the Minister uh, agree with the thought of a second increase in fare prices for Translink? Well, uh, thank the member for his, for his question, uh, and let me say, um, absolutely not. Uh, I don't believe um, that um, it would make any kind of sense, either economically or, or in any uh, way, to uh, attract uh, greater usage of, of our public transport system by, by, by uh, um, putting forward a second uh, increase in fares. Um, uh, uh, at this time, uh, and, uh, and I rule that out uh, without any reservation uh, at all. I think, yes, the, the situation is challenging, and yes, um, there is the need for streamlining and, and, and savings to be made, but I think uh, simply putting up furs um, is not uh, a solution that is on my radar um, at this point in time. And I call Mr David McNary. Mr Speaker, uh, just to the Minister on the issue, should the Consumer Council ever again uh, be ignored in the manner in which they were by TransLink, could he tell the House what action he would intend to take? Well, I don't, uh, I thank the member for his, uh, his question, but I don't uh, foresee circumstances. I think um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the minor, and I have to say, I believe it to be a relatively minor oversight uh, that, that occurred. Um, I don't think will be repeated uh, as we go forward. And indeed, uh, I, I, as I've said, I was heartened by the discussion that I had with the acting chief executive of the Consumer Council on that basis. Uh, Trevor, just a very quick supplement. Thank you very much, uh, Prime Minister, Speaker. Uh, just, just following on from the previous question, then, Minister, maybe you could advise. Uh, we would not describe it as minor, given that you were told by the Chief Executive of TransLink on the 4th of November, and you didn't make the decision until somewhere around the 11th of December. So it's not somewhat minor, but you ignored the Chief Executive of TransLink, who reminded your protocol in relation to the uh, protocol with uh, the Consumer Council. Grateful to the member. Uh, I, I think the member will know that uh, final decisions were not made uh, on, on until much later, and uh, that, uh, that has been explained not only to himself and to the committee and to this House. Uh, I think it's time to move on. Thank you, and that ends the period for listed questions, and we now move on to topical questions. And can I inform members that questions one, two, one and two have been withdrawn, and I'm calling Mr. Patsy McGlone. Uh, could I ask, them, or sorry, uh, question number three, question number three. Topical questions, so proceed. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Um, could I ask the Minister just for an update then on the uh, duelling scheme between Randallstown and Castle Dawson? Uh, grateful to the uh, member for uh, his, uh, his question, um, even in, though it might be number three in his book. Um, the, uh, the Department uh, uh, um, is uh, continuing to look at uh, this. The scheme, the ASIC scheme. He will know that we um, brought forward a, a scheme by which uh, we could, subject to the uh, 
uh, available finance uh, be able to move on uh, on site fairly quickly in terms of that, that Castle Dawson section. That remains uh, our, our, our position, and I hope very much that, you know, whilst the economic situation is um, relatively bleak and challenging, uh, that at some point uh, capital monies could be released uh, to bring forward that element of the of, of the AX, ASX scheme. And I'll call Mr. McGlone for a supplement. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for that. Uh, can the Minister provide us with any clarity at all? I, re I realise that tender documents were issued, I think, on the 7th of January uh, for this particular scheme. Uh, has he any clarity at all as to any sources of funding which might secure at least a wee bit more progress in this? Because, um, as someone who regularly travels that route, along with thousands of others, it, it is really a problematic route. Right. Grateful to the, to the member, and I cannot bear him by saying that the tender uh, process uh, commenced with the public publication of a notice um, in, the, uh, in the journal on the 28th of uh, the OJEU uh, journal um, on the 28th of July 2014, seeking expressions of interest uh, from contractors to provide a shovel ready contract, which will enable uh, an early start to construction when finance becomes available. Tender documents. Uh, were issued on the 7th of January 2015 and returned on the 17th of February, a six-week tender period. Um, but as I've said, actual construction of the scheme will not commence until further funding is confirmed by the executive. Thank you. And I call Mr. David McNary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I can't actually think of a, a more topical issue than one of breaking news. Can the Minister advise the House as to what consideration there is in his 2015-16 budget allocation for the London Dairy to Coal Rain Rail Track project? Grateful to the member for his, um, his, his topical question. And indeed, um, uh, can, can I confirm that the, the signalling procurement uh, is still ongoing uh, and the original tender timetable uh, has been extended by a few weeks, but depending on, successful, uh, on a successful procurement process, the, uh, the end date for the substantial elements of the project is still expected to be towards the end of 2016. And of course, um, that means that uh, we've, uh, we've earmarked and allocated funding for that, uh, for that outcome. Thomas McNary for supplementary. That sounds like good news, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank the Minister for that. Could he advise, in light of what he said, could he advise the House how many expressions of interest have been registered uh, to be able to tender for this project? Uh, grateful to the, uh, to the member for uh, his uh, supplementary. I, I think, I, rather than work off the top of my head, I, I prefer to, to confirm that answer in writing to the member as quickly as possible. Order, order, and I call Mr George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, question five. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> My apologies. Um, could I, can I ask the Minister uh, to give an assessment of how traffic will be managed in the Castle Rock Road area of Korean after the merger of the two schools, namely Korean High and Korean Unst? Grateful to the, uh, to the member for his, um, his topical question. Um, and obviously, it's, it's very topical in, in the Coleraine area, um, particularly um, with, the, with the merger of the two schools. The member uh, may well know that I attended a meeting uh, with um, uh, the um, uh, representatives of the Board of Governors and uh, the teaching staff of both schools uh, uh, recently, uh, and uh, we discussed and looked, out, uh, looked at the various. Um, uh, options and uh, uh, as we move forward uh, and as that merger moves forward. And yes, uh, it is in a fairly constrained part of, uh, of town and congestion is, is, uh, um, is almost not inevitable, but it, it is always going to be difficult. To, it'll be a challenge to deal with it. Uh, officials are aware of that and will work positively and constructively, uh, constructively with uh, not only officials from the, from the local education board, but uh, also the, the management uh, uh, of, the, of, of, of the school. Um, would the Minister <clears throat> confirm if we have any, any meetings with public representatives on the future merger? 
Grateful to that. Uh, I, I'm aware that his, uh, his party colleague, the Mayor, uh, wa was, was certainly at that meeting, and uh, uh, um, a representative from East London Derry, uh, Claire Sultan, MLA, also attended uh, uh, that meeting. So uh, I believe that, that both the, the Council interest was represented and reflected uh, successfully at that meeting, and uh, going forward will be included uh, in any ongoing discussions. And uh, questions six and seven were withdrawn within the, uh, the agreed time protocol. So I call Mr. John Dallet. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the, the Minister has been highly successful in attracting capital investment to the east of Northern Ireland. Some people might even say he's been toving about it. But can he tell me what is he going to do to address the historical deficit of transport investment in the northwest and in the west, given that there's no progress in the A5, the A6. People there are concerned that the distribution of the resources is not panning out as it should. Grateful to the member for his, uh, his question. Uh, and I want to uh, absolutely uh, assure him uh, of, of my commitment um, and that is a commitment to enhance and improve the entire road network and in infrastructure and public transport uh, aspects of, of, of all of Northern Ireland. And there are no areas excluded. No areas excluded. And the member will know uh, the commitments that, that uh, I have uh, made good in terms of particularly the, the reopening of the, of the coal rain to London Dairy Line and the saving of that line effectively. So um, I understand the point that he makes. I understand to a certain extent uh, uh, his concerns on it. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, I have a commitment to enhancing and improving the entire network wheresoever it is and as quickly as possible as I can do it. And indeed, um, I, I also say that uh, my department has the best record in drawing down European subsidy and grant aid for um, schemes that we've been involved in, and we're always on the lookout to see uh, how that can be enhanced and improved. Mr. Dallet for supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I, I thank the Minister for his answer. He seemed to struggle with my use of the word toving, which is really just a country term for boasting. Uh, the, the, the Minister, of course, is not responsible for the historical neglect of the North West, but he is the current Minister. And could I ask him to tell the House in view of the applications that he has currently made to the European Union, what impact might that have on the North West to address the serious historical problem that exists there in terms of transport, both road and rail? Grateful to the, to, to the member for his uh, supplementary question. Uh, and indeed, uh, I, uh, I wasn't familiar with the expression of toving. Um, I, I, I generally always told that boasting was never um, a, a thing to, uh, to engage in, and uh, I have also tried to show an attractive modesty. Um, but um, for all of that, uh, I think, uh, we, we, uh, as I indicated, we, we continue to bring forward schemes, uh, and as we work on them, um, the, the specially um, created uh, section uh, within my department that, that looks at EU funding opportunities. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's part of their job to seek out and identify uh, where we can do that uh, as quickly and as speedily uh, uh, as we can. He will know the European funding record that, uh, that gave assistance to the track relay um, uh, uh, scheme. And, uh, and if there are other road infrastructure schemes, and we might have some hopes in terms of the A6, um, and I don't want to um, uh, um, predict uh, or, or boast about something that is not yet, or, or be tovey about uh, anything, but I think there are opportunities that we can uh, pursue, and we will pursue those opportunities. Thank you, and I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Minister will be aware that the Mersey Street um, has been closed for this past number of months. Major um, work um, going on there. Um, could the Minister just out outline the sort of work that's going on and the timescale for that, please? 
grateful to the, to, to the member for his, uh, for his question. And of course, there are um, significant schemes um, through, through, through capital monies that are, that are happening um, uh, in all areas and all parts of Northern Ireland. And in fact, um, and I think that, that's an issue that slightly surprises people then when they hear of budgetary concerns. Uh, but it is the difference between the resource budget allocation and the capital budget. And, you know, happily we've been able to, to bring forward um, schemes. There, is, there, there will always be a level of inconvenience in terms of, 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 of the practical outworking and working through um, the, the, the completion of, of any scheme, whether it is resurfacing, whether it is pipeline, whether it is track lane or whatever. Um, and we, we seek to work with local communities and our contractors and those uh, engaged in it uh, to continue to do that, and that will be the case. Mr. Douglas, for a supplementary. And again, I'm sure the Minister will agree with me that um, working in those areas, they need to work along with local communities. And the Collinswater Community Greenway are also operating in that same area. So, so would the, the Minister encourage his workers to continue to work in partnership with the Collinswater Community Greenway? Grateful that um, the, uh, uh, the member makes, I, I think, a very important point. Um, I think uh, I, I'm very much aware of the of, of, of the Conswater um, uh, Greenway project, uh, and I think um, all agencies and other agencies, not even under my remit, um, are, are cooperating, uh, and I expect that of uh, the officials and the agencies of my department too. And uh, I call Mr. Alec Maskey. Could I point out that there may not be time for a supplementary if you want to get it in first? Gorbachev, uh, Kieran Could I ask the Minister, uh, could he tell the House when he will publish the PAR review into procurement on the Derry Coal Rain Line, even if it had to be in a redacted version? Grateful to the member for his, uh, for his um, uh, question. Uh, the member will know that the, the Committee for Regional Development has made repeated request for site um, of the power report uh, produced uh, for the department in September 2014. Uh, the department has been um, consistent in its position that it will share the report with the committee following the conclusion of the procurement process, which is currently underway. However, it is not in a position to do so immediately due to sensitivity around the commercial confidentiality of the report. The scope of the review has been released to the committee already. There is, uh, I should tell the House, an ongoing competition, and I have taken the view that the report should be released when the competition is complete, but not before then. I also want to stress that I have acted throughout on legal advice, and I believe that I have not breached the law in any respect. Up, I won't have time for a, a full uh, supplementary and answer. So, if members just take their ease while we change the top table and we'll return to the debate.